a Mark Brown Arthur chapter book. Arthur and the Big Blow Up. Text by Stephen Krensky, based on a teleplay by Sandra Willard. Chapter 1. I'm open, cried Arthur, wildly waving his arms. He was calling from midfield. His team, Lakewood, was nearing the end of a soccer game against Estabrook. The Lakewood team included Buster, Binky, Sue Allen, Francine, and the Brain. Estabrook had scored first, but the lead hadn't lasted. Lakewood had tied things up at the end of the half. Buster saw Arthur waving and waved back. Oh, he realized suddenly, Arthur wants me to pass. Buster kicked the ball downfield to Arthur. Arthur took a step back to get it, but the ball sailed over his head. He had no chance to reach it. But Francine did. As the ball hit the ground, Francine trapped it neatly and turned toward the opposing goal. Two defenders were darting toward her. Francine waited until they were close enough, then she faked them out and dribbled past them. The brain was waiting at the far goal post. He gave Francine a small nod. Francine nodded back. Leaning forward, she chipped the ball toward the goal. The goalie leaped up with her arms extended, but the ball escaped her grasp. Seeing his chance, the brain jumped forward and headed the ball toward the net. Score! Lakewood now led, 2-1. Prunella and Fern cheered from the sidelines. I knew we'd get ahead, said Fern. I just knew it. We haven't lost a game yet. Prunella nodded. Everybody's playing so well. And there's really good teamwork. If we can keep it up, we'll win the championship for sure. Fern cheered. Then it's on to the Super Bowl, she squealed. Prunella shook her head. There's no Super Bowl in soccer, Fern. That's football. No? Fern shrugged. Well, the World Series, then. The Fall Classic. The. Fern, there's no World Series, either. That's baseball. Fern frowned. Well, where do we go for soccer? The World Cup, said Prunella. Or the Olympics. Okay. Sounds good to me. Tweet. The whistle from the referee signaled the end of the game. As everybody on both teams shook hands, Sue Ellen caught up with Binky. If we win one more game, we make the playoffs, she said. Binky smiled. No problem, he said. We've got a tough team at midfield. Binky, you play midfield. Uh-huh. Exactly, Buster came running up to the brain and clapped him on the shoulder. You really used your head on that last one, he said. The brain grinned. Buster, I can always count on you to say just the right thing. Buster beamed. Nobody can beat us as long as we have you and Francine. That's right, said Arthur. Francine did a great job setting up the score. Thanks, Arthur, said Francine. You played a good game, too. Fern ran up with a camera. Let me get a shot for the school newspaper. The team gathered around the brain and Francine, shuffling into position. Say, armadillo with a pillow, Fern told them. Armadillo with a pillow, they shouted, laughing. Fern snapped the picture. Chapter 2 Even though the team was doing well, everyone knew how important it was to keep practicing. So they got together the next afternoon to scrimmage. The team split into two groups. Francine was the captain of one. The brain led the other. Buster kicked the ball downfield. It bounced off Arthur's stomach and landed near his feet. Arthur, I'm open, cried Francine. Arthur's stomach hurt, but he took a deep breath and kicked the ball toward her. Nice pass, said Francine, taking the ball. 
she began dribbling down the sideline. Hey, out of bounds, shouted the brain, running over. I am not, Francine insisted. Look at my foot. The brain pointed at the line. Your foot was over the line. You just moved it back. No way. Your eyes are playing tricks on you to make up for the fact that I'm better than you are. The brain stiffened. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. You're the one who can't see right. Oh, yeah? This argument went on and on. The other players sat down to wait it out, all except Binky. He remained standing, bouncing the ball on his head. 3,478, 3,479, 3,480. I wish I'd brought a book, said Buster. Arthur yawned. He looked over at Francine and the brain, who showed no signs of letting up. That's not true. It is. Hey, guys, said Arthur. I've got this amazing idea. What do you say we finish the game? Binky caught the ball. Yeah, he said, my head's getting sore. The brain folded his arms. Obviously, we're not going to settle this ourselves. We need an arbitrator. A what? asked Francine. A kind of judge. Someone we trust. He looked around. You saw what happened, Arthur. You make the call. Me? That's right. Arthur tried to think back. Well, at first it looked like her foot was over the... Come on, said Francine. Arthur wears glasses. Are you going to trust what he sees? Now, now, said the brain, let's be fair. Arthur is honest and trustworthy. He put his arm around Arthur's shoulders. Why, there's no better kid in the whole school. Go on, Arthur, tell Francine she was out of bounds. Arthur shifted his eyes from side to side. The brain was grinning at him from one direction, and Francine was frowning from the other. Francine sighed. All right, Arthur, you get to decide, but don't just agree with the brain because boys always stick together. Arthur hesitated. But then, he said, it looked like her foot wasn't. The brain's smile faded. Oh, so now you're going to stick up for her. Let him speak, brain, said Francine. Go ahead, Arthur. Oh, said Binky, cupping his ear with his hand. That's my mom calling. I've got to go home for dinner. Can't you wait a little? asked Arthur. You have the only ball. Binky laughed. I never wait when dinner is ready. He ran off with the ball under his arm. Without a ball, said Buster, the game is over. Then I guess it doesn't matter who's right anymore, said Arthur. He stepped out from between his two feuding friends. I think I'll go home, too. Within a minute, everyone had left, everyone except Francine and the brain. They just stood there glaring at each other. And neither of them spoke a word. Chapter 3 The next afternoon in class, Buster nudged Arthur in the side. Francine and the brain are still mad at each other, he whispered. Really? I never thought it would last this long. It's still going strong, said Buster. You should have seen them at the beginning of lunch. They were fighting over a bowl of pistachio pudding. It was the last one, and neither of them wanted to give it up. What happened? The pudding ended up flying through the air and landing on Mr. Haney's arm. It was not a pretty sight. Was he mad? asked Arthur. Mr. Haney, I mean. Buster looked a little uncomfortable. Well, he would have been, I'm sure. But he just thought I'd sneezed on him. So he told me to use a handkerchief. 
Then he left as quickly as possible. That was lucky for them, said Arthur. But they can't count on always being saved like that. He looked over as Francine accidentally dropped a pencil on the floor. It rolled in front of the brain's foot. Muffy, could you hand me that pencil? she asked. Muffy frowned. Why don't you ask the brain? He's closer. The brain can't see feet very well, said Francine. How's he going to see the pencil? The brain snorted. Muffy, tell Francine that I see just fine. Francine, said Muffy, the brain sees just fine. Which is why he's going to pick up your pencil. I'm afraid not, said the brain. It would be unwise for me to touch it. If I did, I might catch something nasty from Francine. Like what? asked Muffy. The brain shuddered. Like whatever makes her so Francine. HMMMPH, snorted Francine, turning away. Double HMMMPH, said the brain. Quiet down, said Mr. Ratburn, calling for everyone's attention. It's time for the speed quiz. The class groaned. Mr. Ratburn went right on talking. No comments, please. You knew this was coming. Just take one quiz and pass the rest around. He gave out a few piles. The brain took his and was about to pass on the rest when he realized he was giving his pile to Francine. Abruptly, he turned to pass the papers to Fern on his left. Hey, said Francine. The brain paid no attention. Francine had to wait for other copies to work their way around to Muffy, who was sitting next to her. Here you go, Francine, said Muffy, handing her the last one. What about me? Arthur whispered. He was sitting behind Francine and the quizzes had never reached him. Why don't you ask your friend the brain? Francine suggested. P-S-S-S-T. Brain. P-S-S-S-T. No talking aloud during the quiz, said Mr. Ratburn. You have one minute. Please begin. Arthur looked around. Everyone else was hard at work. He raised his hand, but Mr. Ratburn had his back turned. Mr. Ratburn, he called out finally, I, um, think. Time's up. Everyone stopped writing. Arthur leaned over to Buster. If Francine and the brain don't make up soon, I'll never make it to fourth grade. Chapter 4 Later that afternoon, Arthur and Buster's